Well, hello, this is Kelly, and I am the Mathematic Plumber, and welcome to video three of the wet venting series. In today's video, we're going to talk about sizing a basic wet vented system. All code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. This video assumes you already have prior knowledge of plumbing code interpretation and sizing of drains and vents. And for those of you new to this topic, no problem, I have two video series, Basic Drainage Waste and Venting and Level 2 Drainage Waste and Venting. So let's start with Clause 2521 1A. A soil or waste pipe is permitted to serve as a wet vent provided the hydraulic load is in accordance with Table 2581. So this clause says I need to use Table 2581 to size a wet vent. So let's have a look at it. Now this table is fairly straightforward. On the left hand side we have the size of wet vent in inches. If I move over to the two columns to the right, you'll notice that it's the maximum hydraulic load in fixture units. If we look in the center column, we see not serving water closets. So what this is, is hydraulic load in fixture units in wet vented systems that have no water closets in them. If we move one over to the right, it says fixtures other than water closets that serve not more than two water closets. Now this is hydraulic load in fixture units as well, but in wet vented systems that do serve water closets. The best way to learn how to use this table is to actually go and size up a system. So what I have here is a simple bathroom group where I have a water closet here, a bathtub here, and a lav sink up here. The wet vent extends from the lav sink trap arm, down this pipe, around the corner, and then along to where it meets up with the water closet trap arm. Now before we go any further, we need to look up table 2493 and figure out the size of fixture outlet pipe and fixture units for each one of these fixtures. I've already gone through table 2493 in detail in past videos, so I'm not going to do that again. What I will do is tell you the values from it. The water closet is a flush tank water closet with a 3 inch fixture outlet pipe and 4 fixture units. The bathtub has a 1.5 inch fixture outlet pipe and it is 1.5 fixture units. The lav sink has a 1.25 inch fixture outlet pipe and it is 1 fixture unit. And now we need to count up our fixed unit load, specifically every fixed unit that's draining into the wet vent. This does not include the last connected fixture, in this case, a water closet. So I have one from the lav, one and a half from the bathtub. That means I have 2.5 fixed units draining through the wet vent. Let's reference table 2581 now. So we are serving a water closet, so we're going to look down the right hand column. If I go down to one and a half inches, I'll notice that there's a line through there. That means when I have a wet vent serving a water closet, I may not ever use one and a half inches. It's too small. So I go down one line to two inches and it says, hey, you can use up to three fixture units on a two inch wet vent that's serving a water closet. Therefore, we will be using a two inch wet vent for our example. Now, just for clarity, if we had a situation like this where we have two water closets joined into our wet vent, we would still only count the fixtures flowing through the wet vent to use the wet vent table. In this case, that would be one lav. Both of those water closets would not be included in that fixture unit count. For my next example, I have another wet vented system that does not have any water closets in it. I have a one and a half inch shower, that is one and a half fixture units. And I have a one and a half inch tub, that is also one and a half fixture units. The wet vent extends from the continuous vent down to the bathtub trap arm, and the wet vent has one and a half fixture units flowing through it. Look back at table 2581. We're going to use the center column because we are not serving water closets with our wet vent. If I go down to a one and a half inch wet vent, I will find out I can serve two fixture units. So that should be good for this system. I will have a one and a half inch wet vent. So now regarding this, we need to look at another important code clause that goes with this. 25211J. The wet vented portion is not reduced in size, except for the portion that is upstream of emergency floor drains in accordance with sentence 25113. Now the first half of this clause tells me something really important. The size of a wet vent will never be reduced in size, meaning I figure it out once with the total fixed unit load, and that's the size it's going to be. So if I look at my first example, right from the water closet trap arm to the lav sink trap arm connection, will be a two inch wet vent. It will not reduce in size. The second half of this clause does allow us to put in an emergency floor drain into this situation and that could change the size of the wet vent. 
An emergency floor drain is a floor drain installed in an area where it would only receive water in the event of an emergency. For example, an emergency floor drain in a bathroom that would only receive water if the toilet overflowed. One other important thing to note about the emergency floor drain, it has a fixture unit load of zero. I have an example of a wet vented system that has a water closet, a lav sink, and an emergency floor drain. The wet vent extends from this point here, down, around the corner, and across until it meets into the water closet trap arm. Notice we have the floor drain there. This is an emergency floor drain. The wet vent increases in size from 2 inch to 3 inch so we can pick up that emergency floor drain. This is permitted. And that brings us to the end of this video, but stay tuned for the next one where we put in more fixtures into our wet vent and size it up and see what happens. Until that time, you have yourself a stupendous day.